Hello everyone. I'm back with you for another quick machining tip. I was asked to explain how coordinates work on machine tools, and it's really quite simple. If you look at the milling machine, for instance, you have three axes of motion, side to side, front to back, and up and down. You can establish any spot within those axes as your zero, and from that zero you can travel in either the positive or negative direction in each axis. The coordinates are simply distance measurements in whatever measuring system you're using, metric or imperial. Each axis is given a name as well. On the milling machine it will be X, Y, and Z. For the lathe it's just X and Z because there is no up and down axis of motion. These names are used on CNC machines to differentiate between the axes in the program, and they're also used on the digital readouts on manual machines. Everything is oriented according to the spindle axis of the machine, which is always labeled as the z-axis. So on a vertical mill like this one, z is going to be up and down. On a horizontal, it will be front to back. And on the lathe, z is the longitudinal axis along the bed of the machine. X is always the longer of the other two axes, and Y is the shorter, side to side and front to back, respectively, on a vertical mill. Since the lathe only has two main axes of motion, the X axis is the crossfeed. The compound does not get its own axis designation. Looking at the digital readout, or DRO, you have separate readouts for each axis, and they can be zeroed individually. The one for my mill has X, Y, and Z, but it's very common to only have X and Y, since a 3-axis DRO is more expensive. The lathe DRO will only have X and Z. Like I said earlier, the coordinates are just distance measurements. You would set zero on each axis when you touch off your tool or find your edges, and then move the distance shown on your print. If the print shows a hole 12 millimeters in on the X and 8 millimeters in on the Y, you simply move to those measurements as your coordinates. If you're working in inches, all of your measurements will have to be in decimal inches, so a half an inch will be 500 thousandths. If you're unsure how decimal inches work, check out my video on thousandths of an inch. I'll have a link to it down in the description, as well as at the end of this video. One of the most common mistakes when using a DRO is not paying attention to where the decimal point is. DROs almost always read to at least four decimal places in inches, and in this case five, and at least three in metric. This can be really confusing for beginners in either system of measurement, since the print usually just shows measurements to thousandths of an inch or hundredths of a millimeter. If you need to move 500 thousandths of an inch, or 0 .500 inches, make sure the 5 is right after the decimal point. One last topic to discuss about DROs. They are a completely separate measuring device that's just attached to the machine. They show the actual position of the machine and are totally unaffected by backlash, the play between the screw and nut that drives each axis. That means when you go to a coordinate on the DRO, you are that distance away from the zero that you set earlier. If you have any questions or topics you'd like to see me cover in a future video, leave those down in the comments below. While you're down there, hit that like and subscribe button if you think I've earned it, and if you really like what I do, please consider supporting my channel over on Patreon like these fine folks. You might also want to take a look at these other videos while you're here, because they complement this one. On the left is my video where I talk about thousandths of an inch, and on the right is a video showing various ways of finding edges on the milling machine. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.